At COP27, Arup has been working across a number of different lines, talking to and engaging with both government and the private sector. Such areas include enhancing the resilience of our infrastructure, or promoting more circular economy in terms of our materials and our buildings, and also improving the resilience associated with our water infrastructure and helping in terms of movement towards fairness in terms of energy transition away from fossil. But as we read the announcement today, I've certainly a number of takeaways and I, my main one is that I think it has slightly fallen short in terms of the ambition that we had and the goals for the agreement in advance of coming to Egypt. It is very difficult to get consensus across 200 different governments and all that are disproportionately impacted from climate change. While I believe that the text has fallen short of the overall goals that we had in coming to Egypt, my view is that there are four important takeaways. And the first one really is the one that is get, getting the most media attention, which is the new facility for loss and damage. I think it's humbling to hear that the most vulnerable communities that are impacted by climate are welcoming this announcement. Those countries include Pakistan, but also include the least developed countries and the small island developed nations. Those are the ones that are the most vulnerable, and that's why the fairness of the design of this package becomes really important. The second takeaway really is that attention that's focusing on just transition, just transition of the economies that are moving away from fossil fuel and having the importance and recognition that that movement needs to be fair and needs to be just. The third takeaway I have really is what the agreement has highlighted is and restated is the Glasgow commitment about phasing down of fossil. That commitment has not been strengthened here in Egypt. Some focus is placed on coal, but not all the fossil fuels. The fourth takeaway really is the slight distraction that has been made away from the mitigation work program. It is really important that our 1.5 degree goal are achieved and that that is seen as being a limit rather than a target in terms of what the parties are trying to achieve. There isn't enough ambition within the national determined contributions of countries to achieve that 1.5 degree. And that's where I would expect a lot more attention on the road up now to COP28 in the UAE next year. There are still large gaps in terms of emissions reductions and a lot of activity needs to be concentrated to fill those gaps. And that activity can happen across energy systems, transportation systems, water systems, and improving the resilience of communities and the most vulnerable.